Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we're back in the thick of it. We've got vaccine passports, face coverings. I don't know about where you are today, but round here, the streets were pretty empty. The roads were definitely pretty empty. We've got work from home, talks of increased restrictions again before Christmas. But I think we have to be honest now and face up to something that looks like it might be heading our way. And that's another lockdown. There are very strong rumours of another lockdown in the first week of January. Very strong rumours, to the point where I think it looks extremely likely. Now, I obviously hope that doesn't happen. And in my opinion, it has to be based around hospitalisations and deaths, not simply cases. But we'll just have to wait and see what the state of play is at the time, won't we? But if there is another lockdown, we have to learn the lessons from the last one and not make the same mistakes again. We need to reopen the Nightingale hospitals and make them operational again. We can't have another situation where GP appointments, cancer treatments and frankly everything else is cancelled as our NHS is told to become simply the National Covid service. I don't think the public will accept that, not considering what we currently know about Omicron. There is already talk of patients being discharged from hospitals and into care homes. Now, last time that happened, it was a scandalous disaster. Of the 48,213 COVID deaths registered between mid-March and mid-June, 40% were care home residents. People were sent into care homes that weren't even their own with COVID and lots of people died. Care homes are already saying they haven't got enough staff, partially down to the fact that 103,000 non-vaccinated care staff may well be sacked. But I ask again now, please reopen these Nightingale hospitals, as well as the 4,000 beds in the Nightingale Hospital at London's Excel Centre for people requiring intensive or high-dependency care, and equal, by the way, to the pre-pandemic intensive care bed base in England. Six further sites were set up around England, weren't they? Birmingham, Manchester, Harrogate, Bristol, Sunderland... And Exeter. Now, if all of those beds had been used, this would have amounted to around 15,000. The total setup cost of those Nightingale hospitals was £220 million, apparently, with a further 200 million quid for the running costs. Now, we're being told, aren't we, that the NHS may be about to be overwhelmed, that we might have to lock down to protect the NHS. We've heard that before. Well, surely the Nightingale hospitals can help prevent both another COVID care home crisis and a potential lockdown. These giant white elephants can't just sit there empty again. Yorkshire's 500-bed hospital opened by Captain Sir Tom Moore closed without treating a single patient. London's Excel apparently treated just 20. The facilities in Birmingham, Manchester, Bristol and Harrogate shut their doors permanently in April. The Health Service Journal reported that. I've got no idea what their current state is now, by the way, but we should be making them operational again as quickly as possible. We can't get around the fact that one of the main reasons they weren't used was because we didn't have enough staff to man them. This government always knew about the potential for a variant like this, and I just don't think the public will tolerate a series of giant medical overflow car parks sitting there empty while we're all trapped in our living rooms, locked down to protect the NHS. Other lessons, though, need to be learnt as well, don't they? We need to make sure that we don't close the gyms. I'll never understand the argument behind closing gyms and exercise facilities to protect public health. Our medical officers and government need to not engage now in the kind of wanton scaremongering and misrepresentation of, at times, very dodgy figures that played roulette with this nation's mental health. Time and time again, we've seen dubious, at times wildly inaccurate modelling presented as absolute fact. That terrifies people and it also undermines trust in our medical community. And our government needs to start following the rules as well. We can't have another Matt Hancock situation, can we? And we can't have any more of those dodgy Christmas parties, a bit like this one here that has caused former Tory London mayoral candidate Sean Bailey to step down from the London Assembly last night. Lockdowns have to be a last resort. They have to be based on deaths and hospitalisation, not case numbers or dodgy predictions, or, crucially, government incompetence.